accurate and stable boost control is essential to the reliability and the performance of any turbocharged vehicle, but nowhere is that more critical than in drag racing where we see engines making more power and running much higher boost levels. Conventionally, boost pressure is controlled via an external wastegate and the ECU controls a solenoid which can control the supply of pressure to that wastegate. By varying the pressure to the wastegate, the boost pressure can be increased or decreased. The problem with this system, however, is that there is a limit to how much we can vary the boost pressure. At the minimum boost pressure, this is controlled by the spring that's fitted to the wastegate. Let's say for example, we've got a 20 psi spring fitted to the wastegate. This means that within reason, on the wastegate spring alone, we'll achieve a minimum boost pressure of approximately 20 psi. From here, we can then use the ECU to supply pressure to the other side of the wastegate to increase the boost. But with a 20 psi spring, depending on our turbo size and the exhaust back pressure being created, we may be able to get to a maximum of perhaps 40 or maybe 45 psi. In drag racing, we may need to run a much wider spread of boost than this, and perhaps we may want to leave the line with 20 psi of boost to ensure that the car doesn't overcome the traction available on the track, but in the deep end, we may want to run 60 to 70 psi or even more. We can't get this with a conventional wastegate system. To overcome this in drag racing, it's quite common now to see CO2 based boost control systems. These consist of a high pressure CO2 bottle that's contained inside the car. With this bottle we can regulate the pressure of the CO2 that the ECU can then supply to the wastegate. In this instance, instead of just having the boost pressure that the engine is running available to feed to the wastegate, we can then increase the boost pressure dramatically with the CO2 gas. We could, for example, regulate the CO2 gas supply to 100 psi and supply this to the wastegate. This means that we've got a lot more force available in terms of the CO2 pressure to force that wastegate closed, and using this we can still achieve our minimum 20 psi of boost as the car leaves the line, but increase the boost to 60 or 70 psi in the deep end of the track. The other area where CO2 boost control differs is that now instead of trying to regulate the boost pressure in the inlet manifold using our ECU, we'll generally be measuring the pressure applied to the top of the wastegate and regulating that instead. Now, this allows much finer control of that pressure on the top of the wastegate, but now we are trying to achieve a set boost pressure in a roundabout way. What I mean by this is that the pressure on the top of the wastegate will relate to the boost pressure in the inlet manifold, but it's not a direct correlation. So there's a little bit more that goes into the tuning, however once we've got this right, we can achieve much more stable, much more accurate control of the boost pressure in the inlet manifold as the car goes down the track. Using CO2 boost control does increase the complexity of the system and of course it really is only suitable for drag racing where the runs are quite short because we've got a finite amount of CO2 in that bottle fitted to the car. It also requires a little bit more work from the tuner in order to get that correlation between the wastegate pressure and the boost pressure that the engine's seeing which of course is the most critical aspect. If you liked that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.